What is at stake? What are we facing in the European crisis? And what can be done to prevent a wider spreading of the crisis to Italy and Spain? Well, the European Union has been criticised as shooting the messenger. But surely the investors, private investors and rating agencies have some share of the blame. Indeed, they may be the primary act tool of other powers which are anti-EU, which are trying to destroy the EU through the financial crisis. Today, the EU took a positive step forward, in my opinion, in trying to ban Moody's from the rating agency from uh, having any influence over those countries such as Greece and Portugal who are receiving the second run of money uh, to support their economies through the financial crisis. Now, Moody's has been persistently trying to downgrade Greek and Portuguese debt, even though it knows that the very actions that the European Union are taking make it more posit positive towards investors that they will get their money back. Because the EU, at, at, in the final analysis, is the guarantor of all this debt. But isn't that a critical point to make? Because that is the weak point on which rating agencies are working for other powers, in my opinion, who are anti-EU, are trying to do. Chiefly those powers would probably be American, I'm afraid to say, to my American viewers. Actors such as the... Um, the Federal Reserve under Geithner and Ben Bernanke. Even though Geithner has been saying openly that the EU needs to um, coalesce together and become ever more deeper and wider a political and economic and military union in the press, he has been doing exactly the opposite by exporting inflation to the EU to the point where the EU has had to pay in terms of what America makes in one year, that's $14.7 trillion worth of America's debt. And now America won't support $273 billion, which is, of course, the smaller figure for Portuguese and uh, Greek debt. It's absolutely outrageous that they're doing this to a fellow Western power, which has so much in common with the United States. We should be the partner that the United States is working with, not communist China. Indeed, Niall Ferguson's analysis of America calls, calls that their relationship with China is far closer together than, um, than with uh, the EU. Indeed, the Americans, gen, uh, chief of the military, has invited... Chinese admirals and generals to view American aircraft and said yes go aircraft carriers and said yes go and develop aircraft carriers we should be doing everything in our power to possibly prevent anything that the Chinese do given that they're a communist power that kill a million of their people every year in, in slave labour camps you know it's another holocaust why won't the Americans speak openly about this? This is our Europe, our Western civilization, And as I said in the Thilo Sarrazin video, we have serious problems with immigration in Europe. And this, this is putting stress on the social democratic model of which Europe should be the shining light to the world. It is the shining light to the world. But it cannot have its social democracy and social market and welfare state abused by influxes of immigrants who are unskilled and uneducated. As Thilo Saracen said, the ratio of educated people having fewer and fewer children and more uneducated people who are out of work forming an underclass which is becoming more and more uh, larger through immigration and replacing the indigenous European people of Roman and Nordic and Celtic descent, mean that it could be the death knell for social democracy. Isn't this what far-right Americans want? Or far-right 
uh, bureaucrats want, the death of, of social democracy. To me, the social market has been proven to work in economic terms, in theory and in practice, as Sweden shows and Germany has shown. Germany is at currently going far ahead of other European countries. Not only is it getting some uh, relief from the inflows of of, uh, of returns of interest on loans that it's getting, but it has also increased its manufacturing. Whether the euro goes down, it wins, or whether the euro goes up. If the euro goes up in value, Germany and, and the eurozone will win out because the inflows of capital goods and uh, primary resources will be cheaper and if the euro goes down in price against the dollar we will be able to export more so we have a very well balanced economy and the Americans saying when they have 114% debt on their currency when their currency is worth almost nothing right that the euro is its stability is at stake is incredible but they're still trying to spread the crisis the Federal Reserve that is I'll make the distinction between America and the Federal Reserve they're still trying to export the crisis to Spain to Italy to cause the death knell of the um, of the of the of the EU and the Euro, Eurozone and don't take my word for it look on the BBC and see American economists constantly berate the Euro and debt and and put it down. The Italian finance minister is at loggerheads with Berlusconi over who's going to succeed, even though Berlusconi said he's going to uh, leave of his own accord um, and won't run again. Now, 20 years of corruption and mafia collusion is enough, Mr. Berlusconi. But um, his finance minister wants to put austerity packages in. Now, although I'm not for austerity packages, the rating agencies such as Moody's should at least give some sort of positive incentive for him, him to do it if that's what economists are saying should be done but what we really need is real getting hold of this debt and putting it into one toxic all the toxic debt into one bank so that it can be so that the mal investments can in fact be dissipated and liquidated you know but perhaps we should be thinking about liquidating the Moody's agency since it has shown itself to be an enemy force towards the EU. The EU has already banned it. So that the, the EU's got its knives out for the for Moody's, you know, in a, you know, not a literal sense, but uh, perhaps it should have a literal sense out for these people. Because they they are being willing agents, willingly used by other powers to try and destroy the EU, and the you know, and also cause a rift between the United States and the EU, which will can't, which the Western world can't afford. The Western world is facing um, a, a needs to get a multiplier effect from exporting uh, capital goods such that machines that make other machines and other consumer goods to the uh, Arab Spring countries to get the uh, Middle Eastern Union going it needs to open up Africa as I've said open up the trade between all the Western countries so that we can eventually get a Westmark currency a um, Western a, a common Western civilization with a common government common military common trade free trade between um, America and Europe in the Atlantic and also free trade between Australia, Canada and New Zealand. So we eventually get a common Western civilization. These people who are doing this, I believe, have to be weeded out and they have to be you know legally taken taken to, to the cleaners basically. Because these people are doing it for their own interests. They're trying to make money on the margin against and their profits cannot outweigh the 700 million people or billions of people in the Western world who will suffer from the dominance of China and Russia and India because those people, those minority of people, want to profiteer out of the financial crisis, that being Moody's. So good for the EU for banning them. Thank you for listening.